Good morning, Agape community. Just a warm welcome to you on this Palm Sunday as we start off our Holy Week, <clears throat> remembering how Jesus had his triumphal entry to Jerusalem, his last days with his disciples, and his death and resurrection. So for those of you that are new to Agape this morning, so here's what you can expect. So whenever we get together on Sundays, we take communion. So if you'd like to participate, just make sure that you have so some bread or uh, wine or grape juice near you. Uh, so when we take communion, it's a remembrance of what Christ has done for us, and also to remember that we are unified in Christ with believers all over the world. So we'll also worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings, and you can either donate online or send a check, and all that information you can find on our website, agapechurch.life. We'll also have an opportunity to pray for one another, to share our concerns, and to celebrate together. We'll also have a special time highlighting a Bible story that's designed especially for our little ones joining us today. And then Pastor Florin will share a message as he finishes up his series on the book of Isaiah. So I'd like to start this worship service by reading um, from Psalm 118. It's a psalm that Jewish people would have been very familiar with, and it's actually um, words that they shouted as Jesus um, had his entry into Jerusalem as we had his holy. So I'll read verses 20 through, 22 through 29. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord be blessed you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love and joy. Robert Kali will share some information about some upcoming events. Good morning, everyone. Uh, last Sunday, we had our Acts of Kindness Sunday, where we put together Easter baskets and people from the community put them together and brought them over to church. And uh, it, we put together 57, I think it was, baskets, which is way more than we needed. So uh, those many of those people have picked up here and they were very appreciative. Um, some of them, some people may be sitting there. And uh, I have about... 15 left. And so I do, I did post last night on social media and <laughs> far more of them were claimed than I have now. So unfortunately, um, but they are going to good use. So thank you everybody who brought something to donate and um, know that they were very well received. Um, we do have a good Friday service this coming Friday. You can join us via zoom or at the North view location. It's at seven o'clock just verifying the time seven o'clock so we'd love to see you there and then we do have a couple of congregational meetings coming up actually one is today after service so we'd love if you would stay on service um at 11 30 we'll start um and we need to talk about just the building situation over at the old saint mary's building and then we will have another one after easter sunday service it will be very brief um, so if you can just join us for a little while, that would be great. Kelly, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Listen, this morning when people picked up the baskets, I heard from Bonnie that uh, there was one mom that was uh, very, very appreciative. Is that right, Bonnie? Yeah, was, the Torinos. The, yeah, and then they were, uh, they were picking up how many baskets? Six. Six baskets for young children. So listen, what you guys do, this is living faith. This is not just... Like we used to say, you know, sit in the pews. You guys, you the community of Agape are making a difference. I don't care where you are. And I know that there are some people that are very far away that are joining us this morning. Welcome to all of you online. So, Colleen, I just want you to know that, that as, as people are picking up, they were very appreciative. Great.
Uh, uh, just a great welcome to all of you, uh, not only here at Northview in, in person, but also to all of you that are online uh, to join us. It's exciting. It's exciting to worship the Lord and realize that everywhere in this world, in, in, this, in this great globe of ours, there are people that are doing exactly the same thing. Now, maybe not in the same way, but they are worshiping the Lord. They are participating in community. They are praying and hearing and worshiping the Lord with a, with, with a message. And this morning, we will do exactly that as Jenny. By the way, if you don't know who that first lady was, that was my lovely wife, Jenny. And she is amazing, isn't she? I love that. I am, I am, I am blessed to have her. Um, but listen, as she said, that if you are online and you'd like to participate, it's really simple. Just have some bread, some grape juice or wine, and then we will do that in just a little bit. Here in Northview, we actually have it in a little tub like this. And Chris, I'm going to give it to you so you can start passing this around. Thank you. Well, we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 28. Uh, here's what the words uh, of this letter are, are saying. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. One more sentence, but I need to grab my phone. Thank you, Chris. Fantastic. That is mine right there. Brilliant. Love it, love it. There it is. There's the bread and there's the wine. So verse 28 says, and this is important, it says the following, everyone, that means me and you and you and you and you, right? Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup. And friends, we'll do exactly that. We will come and approach the Lord's Supper with thankfulness and with examination. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, only you are the one that provides salvation. Only you are the one that can save. Only you are the one to whom uh, you are worthy to receive the word Hosanna, to save. And Father, this morning we approach you with confidence because you've promised that if we approach you in repentance, if we approach you with humility, you are gracious and you accept us. And you accept us through the blood of Lord Jesus. You accept us through his sacrifice. And this morning we are so appreciative. We so thank you from the bottom of our hearts, the fact that you loved us enough, even when we were not lovable. You loved us enough to give the most precious thing that you have yourself, your precious Son, your unique Son. And this morning, Father, you know that in this world, as we live our faith, you know that our feet get dirty. You, at the Last Supper, you washed your disciples' feet. And Father, we need the same. We need our ourselves cleansed from the kinds of things that we ran into as we lived our life. Father, we didn't do the things that we ought to have done and then we rushed into things that we ought not to have done. So, Father, this morning we come to you and we turn away from those things and we ask that the Holy Spirit would come and, in, and fill us with his presence. Let us, Father, wherever our community is, whoever is in hearing of my words today, let them be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with your presence. And Father, there are so many more that we can possibly pray, but you're weak. So we ask the Holy Spirit to complete our prayers and to guide us this morning into proper worship with you. And we ask that in Christ's name. Amen.
Friends, let's eat and drink together. Amen. May the, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his shine, his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. I think it's time for the kids, isn't it, Chad? Yes. All right, kids, guess what? This is your time. Good morning, everybody. I hope you all have had a fantastic week. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jackie, and I have the absolute pleasure of sharing the kids' story every single Sunday here at Agape. Now, before we get started, um, I know that everybody is looking at the fact that my shirt says I like pig butts. I work at a barbecue restaurant, um, and I'm filming this after work. So, um get that out of the way before we even start right so today's story is actually going to be found in john chapter 12. um and today is a huge huge day for those of you who don't know it is palm sunday and palm sunday is very exciting i remember when i was in sunday school right pre-covid way back a long time ago um every Palm Sunday, we would get palm leaves and like the ones you see on the trees in Florida or anywhere south, really. Um, and we would wave them around the sanctuary. We would walk through the sanctuary and we would wave them. And there's a whole reason for that. And I'm sure you're incredibly curious as to what that reason is. And I am here to tell you, I am going to let you know what that reason is. Alrighty guys, so like I said, our story today is going to take place in John chapter 12. And so our story starts, well actually in order to get into our story, we have to have a little bit of background, right? And so the background to this story is a guy named Lazarus. And Lazarus um, actually died. And Jesus had risen him from the dead. So Jesus brought Lazarus back to life. And um, that's kind of the background that we have with this story. So our story actually takes place in a town called Bethany. And Bethany is where Lazarus lived. And the reason that Jesus was in Bethany is because he was having a dinner to, or he was invited to a dinner to celebrate him and the great miracle that he performed with Lazarus and bringing him back to life. And so Lazarus um, was hanging out with him and all the other men chit-chatting. Martha, who was also in the story, she was getting all of the food ready. She's making the food for the dinner. And Mary, Mary Magdalene, um, came over with a bunch of perfume, a large jar of perfume, and poured it all over Jesus's feet and cleaned his feet with her hair. And now, don't get confused, this Mary is not the same Mary who gave birth to Jesus, that's a different Mary. But this Mary um, used her hair and cleaned Jesus' feet with her, this perfume in her hair. And so, um, she was actually called out by one of Jesus' disciples too, his name's Judas. And Judas actually denied Jesus in the coming later parts of the Easter story, but in this part, he and Jesus were still friends, right? And he hadn't denied Jesus yet, and they were on great terms. And Judas looks at Mary and says, why are you using that? Why didn't you sell that to the poor? That's worth a year's wages. What are you doing? Why aren't you selling it and using it to help others? But the reason that Judas said this wasn't because he was concerned about the poor. Um, it was because he actually was a thief and uh, what's called a keeper of the money bag, um, which means he basically would have used the money for himself and not to help other people. And so Jesus looks at Judas and says, leave her alone. It was intended that she would save the perfume for my burial, but or you will always have poor among you, but you will not always have me, right? So he's saying, Judas, leave her alone. She's doing what she needs to do because it's intended for when I die and 
this is kind of foreshadowing as to what's to happen. Wink, wink. But um, basically he's saying, you're always, there's always going to be somebody else to help, but I won't always be here. So cherish the time that you have with me. And so as the dinner goes on and uh, people find out that Jesus is hanging out in Bethany, a large group and crowd starts to form because everybody wants to see the evidence that Lazarus is alive again, that he's back from the dead, because that's a crazy thing to believe and to see happen. And so they wanted to actually see it for themselves. And this actually really irritated the chief priest. And so he actually started to make plans to kill Lazarus again, um, because the priest didn't like that everybody was following Jesus and Lazarus and looking at the miracle that happened between them and seeing that Jesus really was the savior of the world. And so he wanted to take that away. And so the following day, um, we see that another crowd has shown up and it was for a festival and Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem for this and the crowd knew that and so they started, you know, pulling down palm trees and or palm branches and waving them around and they were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and uh, blessed is the king of Israel. And so they were taking these palm trees and they were waving them all over the place and they were shouting and screaming and celebrating. Now Jesus had found a donkey, right? And it was a young donkey and he decided that that was the donkey that he was going to ride into town on. And so that's exactly what he did. And at first, as all of this was happening, the disciples didn't really understand. You know, it took um, Jesus being glorified for them to realize that everything that was written about him um, has come true and that he has he has done right and so the crowd initially that was with him when he rose Lazarus from the dead when Jesus rose Lazarus Lazarus from the dead oh tongue twister um, they spread the word and because of that the word just kept spreading and spreading and spreading that Jesus is this miracle maker and because of that, um, all of these people came to see him and wanted to see his miracles in action. And this really upset some of the higher ups in the church, um, the people called the Pharisees. Um, and they actually started creating a plot to kill Jesus. And if we look forward to Friday, Friday is the day that Jesus was arrested and hung on the cross and died, right? But We'll get into that on Friday because I'm pretty sure we're having a good Friday sermon, right? So, but it's a, it, this is the happy beginning of a very sad end of the week. But then three days later on Sunday, a very, very happy, great event. And we will talk about that next Sunday as well. So that is all that I have for you today. I hope you all have a great week. Um, and for those of you who are interested, we are having kids night this Wednesday. Um, hopefully I see you all there. It's going to be seven o'clock central time. Um, and that is all I have for you. So hopefully I see you all there. If not, I hope you all have a great week. Um, and I will see you next week. Hi everybody, I'm Steve. I'm coming to you from Waukesha, Wisconsin, at our Northview location. So thank you for being here with us this morning. Um, right now it's time uh, in our service 
uh, to do our, our tithes and our offerings and our prayer requests. So that's what I'm here for. First of all, our tithes and our offerings. There are a couple of different ways, as Jenny mentioned before, on how to uh, send your tithes and offerings in. Uh, there's detailed descriptions uh, on how to do that on our website at agapechurch.life. So if you would like to participate uh, in, in tithing, uh, you can do that. It, you know, and just kind of a note on, on, on tithing for a second. I thank all of you who are participating in, the, in that already. It is just so amazing that we can make 57 baskets for people in need because of your generosity. So thank you so much for that. It is absolutely amazing. I, don't, I never thought we could make 57, but that's incredible. So that's how the money is used. Uh, you know, you're part of our mission when you do this. I know that some of you are so far away, you could never come here and make baskets with us. You could do it at home, like we always suggest. But it, but your ties and offerings and your generosity is much appreciated. So we thank you for that. So again, check out agapechurch.life for for uh, instructions on how to do that. Um, we're also here to share prayer requests, and there's a couple of different ways that we can share prayer requests here at Agape Church. Uh, first of all, um, if you are joining us online uh, through Zoom or through Facebook, uh, there are chat boxes that you can actually write your prayer requests in. And believe me, those are seen. They're not just written and go into space, okay? that Those are seen. So feel free to write those down there. If you're in a group like this and you're with other people, simply in an attitude of prayer, share those prayer requests with each other, and God will hear you. And in one way or the other, he is going to answer you those prayers in his time. Remember, in his time. So be patient sometimes with those prayers. Uh, another way that you can do it is through the Agape Prayer Wall. Now that's on something that's called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Uh, you can sign up to be part of the Agape Prayer Wall. It's really cool. Uh, when you want to put a prayer request in, it's called a card. You just simply fill out that card, and it's there. And you're going to be prayed for, and that prayer request will be will be heard and, and seen. Uh, you can look at other people's prayer requests. It's just absolutely an amazing tool. So please check that out, no matter if you are in a group like this, or if you're, you know, I don't know, in Puerto Rico, or I don't know where you're all from, but you're out there. So however you want to do that, Trello.com. And then really the last way uh, to share your prayer, prayer requests, if you would like to keep those private, uh, uh, email Pastor Florin at info at agapechurch.life, and he will see those prayer requests, and we'll be praying for that, uh, on those private requests. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take about a five-minute break. You're going to see a little timer on the screen for those of you who are online. Uh, at the end of that timer, um, I'm going to wrap this up in one last prayer, and then we're going to continue with service. So we'll see you in about five minutes.
Okay, um, Steve again, um, thank you for spending this time um, in prayer um, for each other and for those in your communities. I want to just wrap up this time uh, just with prayer. So if you could bow your head, Father God. <clears throat> oh Lord, uh, we thank you so much for even hearing our prayers, Father. Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. And we know that you do hear our prayers because your word says so. Your word said that you listen to us, Father, and that you hear our hearts and that you take care of us, that you guide us, that you lead us, that you comfort us, Lord. So we thank you so much for being an intimate God, a God who pursues us uh, with passion and with fire and with zeal. Lord, I don't know any other that, that pursues you, Lord. There is no other, Lord. You are God of this universe. You are God of creation. You are God of our lives, and we thank you, thank you, thank you. For that, Lord. Father, I just <clears throat> would ask that you would hear the individual prayer requests that were shared this morning, Lord, and that you would help us uh, move through those, Lord, and answer those prayers for us. One way or the other, Lord, we're seeking your will, Father. We're seeking your will, Lord. We don't want you to be Santa Claus of our lives, Lord. We don't want to and, and ask and just receive because we ask, Lord. We want your will above all else, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. So, Father, answer our prayers as you see fit in your time, Lord. Father God, I just want to lift up um, Pastor Florin and his family to you, Lord. I would ask that you would protect them always, Lord. Protect them. Keep them together, Father. Keep them full, Lord. Keep them, keep them functioning, Lord, as the wonderful family that they are, Lord. That wonderful family that you've communicated or that you've created, Father. We thank you. Thank you so much for them, Lord. Always, always protect them, Father. And, Lord, um, for Pastor Florin, specifically, Lord, as he comes to teach us this morning, Lord, give him words uh, that we may hear, Father, open our hearts, that we may hear what you have to say, Lord, and we thank you so much for all of these. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna in the highest heaven! Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heavens! The eyewitness account I just read was recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 21, verses 6 through 11. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem is recorded in all four Gospels, which means it had a deep impact into the lives of all those present. And today, what I want to do today, I want to share with you Four statements that have a deep impact on your life. Four statements that are going to rock your world. So let's explore the context. What was all the excitement about? Why all the commotion? The exhilaration of those who took to the streets can only be explained in light of Isaiah chapter 66 which was written more than 700 years before Christ. It is very likely that people that lined up on the side of the road were familiar with the prophetic poetry of, of Isaiah. And Isaiah 66 in particular promised a supernatural rebirth and an eternal prosperity, security, and recognition. Now imagine that you live under Roman occupation and you heard Jesus proclaim the arrival of God's kingdom. You saw him heal people, uh, produce food out of thin air, and even raise the dead. Even raise the dead. Would you not be out in the streets? Would you not go out there celebrating? Would you not long for that national rebirth, eternal prosperity, security, and recognition? Let me tell you the longing, that same longing is present today. Rebirth, prosperity, security, recognition. 
Let me show you in the text in Isaiah chapter 66 so you can actually see for yourself. So if you have your Bibles with you, whether you have an electronic Bible, paper Bible, open it please to Isaiah chapter 66. Um, and I will start reading in verses 7 or from verse 7. So first, the rebirth. First rebirth. The nation will be reborn. Verse 7. Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pains come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has ever heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet, no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Do I close up the womb when I'm Bring to delivery, says God. Rejoice with you, rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice greatly with her, all you who mourn over her. For you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. The people of God are citizens of a supernatural kingdom. Which leads me to the very first deep impact statement. Here it is. The kingdom of God is unlike any earthly nation, and you can be part of it. The kingdom of God is unique. There's no nation, there's no government in the world just like it. Even America, people, even America, okay? Even America is not the kingdom of God. It is not the kingdom of God. And, but you know what? You can be part of the kingdom. It's true. You can be part of it. Now, God's supernatural kingdom will prosper. Will prosper. Isaiah 66 verses 12 to 14 say the following. For this is what the Lord says. I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of nations like a flood stream. You will, you will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart will rejoice, and you will flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord will make known to his servants, but his fury will be shown to his foes. The people of God will prosper and be comforted. Do you need comfort? Do any of you need comfort today? Do you know people that need comfort today? The second deep impact statement today is God's comfort comes in many ways. Sometimes he changes our circumstances and sometimes he changes us. Sometimes he changes our circumstances, and sometimes he changes us. Comfort. Don't miss it. See, unfortunately, those celebrating in the streets on Palm Sundays uh, so many years ago, like the people in our day, like the people of today, missed the point. Luke 19, verses 41 through uh, 44 says the following. As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, that's what he did. He wept over it. He wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. My friends, it is possible to celebrate God and miss the point. It is possible to celebrate God and miss the point. Isaiah chapter 66 prophesied also security. God's supernatural kingdom will be secure against all enemies. Verses 15 through 17. See, the Lord is coming with fire and with his chariots are like a whirlwind. He will bring down with his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For with fire and with his sword, the Lord will execute judgment on all people. And many will be those slain by the Lord. Wow, what a vivid picture. 
by the way, in the book of Isaiah, you know, it, uh, the most most of it is poetry. It's prophetic poetry. And in this chapter, this is where the prophetic poetry ends. And Isaiah is beginning to write the rest of the chapter in prose. No more poetry. So verse 17. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to go into the gardens, following one who is among those who eat the flesh of the pigs, rats, and other unclean things, they will meet their end together with the one they follow, declares the Lord. Now we know who that one is. Many people follow the Lord of the darkness, the Lord of the kingdom of the earth, instead of the Lord of light. If you live under Roman occupation, and Jesus entered your city, perhaps you too would be out in the streets shouting, Hosanna! Hoping for rebirth, hoping for prosperity, security, and recognition. Hosanna, Jesus! The word Hosanna means save. Hosanna, Lord Jesus! Save us! So we've covered rebirth, prosperity, and security. The recognition is prophesied in verses 18 through 21. Here's what it says. God pro promises that his kingdom will be made up of people from all nations. Thank the Lord that even Romanians can, can be saved, right? Even Americans can. Germans. Anybody. Anybody can be saved. And here's what verse 18 says. And I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come and gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. I will, I will set a sign. I will set a sign, the text says, right? What is the sign, people? What is the sign? Well, I'll tell you in just a moment. Let me keep reading and I'll, I'll come back to that. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survive to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans, and Libyans, famous for as archers, to Tubal and Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your people from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels. And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. That's how Isaiah ends, with a promise that some from the nations, the Gentiles, will be priests and Levites of the Lord. What an amazing promise, eh? Isn't that crazy? Isn't that wonderful? Didn't that just blow your mind? Deep impact, people. What a, what a cause for celebration. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's recognition. Okay, now, I told you about the sign. What about the sign? Well, Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, says the following. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, this is critical right here, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit Guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. The prophetic text in Isaiah is being fulfilled through Jesus of Nazareth. God's Son, who offers rebirth, eternal prosperity, security, and recognition, he's the only one that can do that, and he guarantees it with a sign, with a sign, a cosmic seal, a royal promise, a divine person. You know, the Holy Spirit is a person. That is the seal, the Holy Spirit. The last two verses assure us, um, by the way, did I just say earlier that that's how Isaiah ends? No, it's, it's towards the end. There are a couple more verses. Here they are. Verses uh, 22 and 24, it, it promises that God's kingdom will endure 
or out of pyramids. As the new heavens and the new earth that I made will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another, from this one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow before me, says the Lord. And they will go out and look on the dead bodies, those who rebelled against me. The worms will eat them and will not die. The fire that burns, they will not be quenched. And they will be loathsome to all mankind. The point is God's enemies, and make no mistake, God's enemies are your enemies. Your enemies will be a threat no more. Hosanna, Jesus, save us, Lord. Jesus. Listen, you and I are not under a Roman occupation, thank God. Our shackles are not made of iron. But our enemy, our enemy is actually more deadly and more dangerous than ancient Rome. Apostle Peter in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5 says, Be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Without the sacrificial death of Jesus and his resurrection, we have no hope against this roaring lion. No hope. Only by the saving blood of Jesus we can cry out, Hosanna, save Say, look, the evangelist in Acts chapter 4, verses 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else. No one else. For there's no other name under heaven given to mankind, to humanity, by which we must be saved. The people that went out in the streets to shout, Hosanna, realized one thing. They were in bondage. And they needed somebody to take them out, to save them out of that bondage. Our third deep impact statement that will change your life is, is this. You can't be saved if you don't realize you're a hostage. You can't be saved unless you realize you're a hostage. Humanity is in bondage to sin. Sin is anything that goes against the universal harmony, the universal harmony created by God. By the way, the scripture calls that universal harmony, it calls it God's law. God's law. See, sin violates God's plan and it prevents the world from being what it was meant to be. Sin, let me tell you, sin is the universal toxin. The universal Toxic, and it, 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 we're all infected. We're all infected with this universal toxin because of sin. We are both hostages in the kingdom of darkness, and we are also willing participants. And make no mistake, we are not only hostages in the kingdom, humanity is not only hostage, but they are willing participants. We know we are willing participants because no human being does what they ought to do all the time, in all places, and in all situations. Sin pollutes our thinking. Sin pollutes our words. Sin pollutes our action, and it poisons our relationships. Sin is rebellion against God's universal harmony. Sin is rebellion against God's law, and sin kills. What we, need, what, we need, what we need is a fundamental metamorphosis, a fundamental change, a fundamental a core transformation, and that's exactly what Jesus offers. He can regenerate human beings from the inside out, and he does it on his terms. He does it on his terms. Terms. Any person who needs rescuing has to listen and accept the terms or the instructions of the one who rescues. Listen, if you find yourself in deep waters and you can't swim, that's not to fight the ones who are trying to rescue you or you can lose your life. 
Same with God. Same with God. God sent his son, Jesus of Nazareth, to rescue human beings from the deadly pollution of sin. Best not to fight him. You can use your life. God regenerates human beings on his terms. Let me explain God's terms. Let me explain the fine print. There's three terms. There's three of them. And you have to accept all three. All three. Number one, the first item in God's terms is agreeing with God that you have disobeyed God's law, the universal harmony created by God. Number two, the second item on God's terms is agreeing with God that he is the only one that can do something about your condition. No one else can do a thing, including yourself. Number three, the third item in God's terms is agreeing with God that all, there's only one way to be saved and the universal toxin eradicated can be eradicated. And that way is through the life, death, and resurrection of his son, Jesus of Nazareth. God made a way, and that way is Jesus, his son. So you see, God's terms, the fine print, is simple. Agree with God that you disobeyed God's law. Agree with God that he is the only one capable of salvation. And agree with God that the only way of salvation is through his son, Jesus. Bottom line, what's the bottom line common denominator? Agree with God. Agree with God. There's one, one final step. Once you have agreement with God, once you agree, Final step, surrender. That's the step. You're not only agreeing with God in an intellectual way, the devils know who he is, and they agree with him in an intellectual way. You're now placing your own fate into his hands. Whatever happens in the future, you're placing your fate, your life, into his hands. That's the step of faith. Thus, therefore, let me share with you the last deep impact statement. Here it is. Deep statement number, deep impact statement number four. Take God's truth and make it personal. Take God's truth and make it personal. It's your life that you're placing in God's hand. Are you ready to make it personal? Are you ready to become a new human being adopted into the family of God? Having the privilege, the, the right to call yourself a child of God. You realize not everybody can call themselves a child of God. That's a, that's a big status. It's a big status. John chapter 1 verses 11 through 13 says the, says the following. That Jesus came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive, receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Rebirth. Rebirth. You know what that means? It's Hosanna. I mean, save. It's personal. If you agree with God, and you're online, or you're here, I'd like to help you make that step of faith. That step of surrender. It's actually not that simple. I mean, it's not that difficult. It's rather very simple. The universal sign of surrender is putting your hands up. Right? I surrender. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do that. I'm not going to ask you to, to put your hands up. Uh, you can express the same sentiment, however, in a very simple prayer. Simple prayer. I surrender. Did you know that those two words can be a prayer? I surrender. That's a surrender prayer. I surrender. Now, let me pray with you. Let, let, me, let me pray. And, and if you are ready to surrender, I, I, I'd like you to pray with me. Pray these words after me. Not that they are some kind of magical words, but it's really, they, they come from the heart. Their heartfelt desire 
of surrender. Let's pray together. God, today I surrender to you. I'm sorry I broke your laws. I'm sorry I made a miss of that wonderful harmony that you intended. Thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and for saving me. I want to be more like you. Holy Spirit, please fill me with your presence. I want to be a child of God. Amen. Rather simple, isn't it? Now listen, if you pray this prayer, we actually want to celebrate with you and send you some helpful information about next steps. They're important, you realize. Listen, take a moment, and if you have your smartphone with you, just grab it out and take a moment and send a text, a simple text, text yes God, one word, text yes God to 84576. That's our number, 84576. So text yes God. Now, if you are a follower of Jesus already, would you please pray? Would you please pray for all those who are texting or are considering texting, those who are online or who are hearing this in a recording? Listen, you, you know, if you're a follower of Christ, you know that this is a big step. And the kingdom of darkness is not really happy to lose another citizen. So would you please pray? Now, if you are considering texting, please text yes God to 84576. Yes, God. So my friends, my message today boils down to this. The kingdom of God is unlike any other nation, and you can be part of it. You are the first and foremost a citizen of God's kingdom, and remember that, and act accordingly. It, God's comfort comes in many ways. Sometimes he changes our circumstances, and sometimes he changes us. We all need a fundamental metamorphosis to reverse the deadly toxins of sin and repair our relationship with God. We also need to cultivate our relationship. Imagine having a friend and you only talk to them once and that's it. No, you cultivate that relationship. You make it a priority. Make faith the most important thing in your life. You can't be saved if you don't realize you're a hostage. You can't be saved unless you realize you're a hostage. Some of us are held hostage by our self-focus. So let me ask you this. What areas in your life you have not yet surrendered to God? What areas in your life, what dark corners in your life might be the ones that, yeah, I I'm not ready to surrender this one, Dad. Not this one. And there's darkness in here. The Holy Spirit comes with a big old flashlight. Say, now, what, what, what you got there? What you got there? Find those areas. Take them captive. And surrender them to Christ. Number four. Take God's truth and make it personal. Take God's truth, make it personal. Now that you know, and the Holy Spirit is nudging you towards action, take it. Take the action. Knowledge without action is a waste of brain space. You agree with that? That knowledge without action is just a waste of brain space. Even after we are adopted into God's family, the consequences of sin continue to affect our daily life. Our living faith is in constant struggle against spiritual forces of darkness, which means that at times, even followers of Christ can have polluted thinking, polluted words, polluted actions. Listen, take these practical action steps today. They're necessary. Remember, Hosanna means save. And you can use it as a daily prayer. You can use Hosanna, one word, as a prayer. Right? I taught you two, two word prayer, I surrender. Here's a one word prayer, Hosanna. You mean save. You mean save. Make it, make it your daily prayer, Hosanna. God save. 
in your every moment as you go out and worship, as you go out and live a living faith, may every moment be a Hosanna moment. And may you be courageous enough to take the next step of faith. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and fill us with your presence so that we may be your ambassadors in our family, at work, school, play, whatever we do as, as we engage in our community. Amen. And now, my friends, go in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Yes, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But do it anyway. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen those who are afraid. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Love God. Love people because you know what? You are citizen of an everlasting kingdom. Invite a friend to participate with you next week and change somebody's world. Now, here's what we're going to do now. Now we're going to worship God with our lives. Let's worship people. Be the church. May God bless you. Amen. Have a great Sunday.